Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers where three Pro Tools experts discuss, demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. That's always a mouthful that bit, I'm not going to lie. And as Andy and myself, Dave, take you deep into the workings of Pro Tools technique and ethos to help the user community understand and get the best out of their investment and we hope that our videos and discussions are helping you do just that. Over the last couple of weeks we've been talking about master faders and how freaking useful they are for control signals prior to arriving at their destinations. Uh, we've looked at what master faders are and how they're useful in the master section, uh, but Anders is going to further the technique to show how they can be used to control signals in subgroups and queue outs. It's a special episode today. What number is it, guys? It's 69. 69, dude! <laughs> and what better way to celebrate such an excellent episode number than having an Anders-centric episode. Andy, are you excited? I'm excited. I don't know what the connection is between <laughs> um, that number and, and Anders, but your relationship is your own. <laughs> I, 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 you're usually quite good with the movie references. I was obviously going for Bill and oh, Ted. I completely know what that movie reference is. I'm just, no, no, complete. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Complete. 19. Yes, it's, it's the Keanu Reeves at his at his finest and youngest. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Absolutely. And the other guy. I I'd, right? I'd love actually before we go in, I'd love to point out that the John Wick series is absolutely an, uh, like an alternative universe of what would have happened if Ted had, had gone to military school. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yep. <laughs> I think we lost Andy. <laughs> oh, dear God. So He's got coffee, coffee up in my nose. <laughs> yeah, <he's... laughs> so much coffee up my nose. I now have caffeinated nose hairs. Wow. <laughs> that was awesome. Anders, take it away. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so one thing that you would do uh, um, a lot of the times is uh, to use a, a send, an output send, uh, for an out for a for a headphone mix. So Andy, do you want to drive this? Um, I so can. If you if you share your screen, because Andy has the perfect session for this. I have I have a session for it. Mm. I don't know. I don't know if anything's really perfect. Okay, so uh, so uh, at this stage uh, there are a couple of recorded tracks, of course, and you want to create a headphone mix uh, for the right. entire like session so that everyone can can listen to this in their headphones right uh, yeah all right so i'm going to go over here first of all because i don't think i've got it set up so let me go mm -hmm. ahead here and um because i'm only using i'm using completely the wrong device for this <laughs> thing so let me just go ahead <laughs> really and are. create just a <laughs> dummy bus um so i'll just go ahead and create something here new path um we'll do stereo we'll call it q1 And I'm going to have it, <laughs> I'll just not even have it sent out to anything. It's just, whoops. Oh, the, oh yeah. Uh, where's Q1? It's not, it's not mapped, yeah. so we're all good. Mm -hmm. But in, in, in a world where I had an interface that I was using that had multiple outputs, it would be, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so great. I've got the output. What's next, Anders? Teach me. Yeah. Uh, so what you want to do now is uh, create a, uh, an output send all across uh, your track. So you've already selected them. And by, or, okay, go ahead. No, uh, Andy, you you wanted to take over this. No, oh, no, no, you're no, using no. the function uh, right away, right? No, 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 no. I, I, no, mm -hmm. no. It's it's your show. This is your thing. I'm not going to. No, um, you, I. You guys I'm are not, so sweet. We are. We are adorable. Um, no, I don't have all my tracks because um, the Q the mix ones. that I want to have is not going to include this master fader and the subgroups because I want to have yeah. individual discrete control over each individual instrument, yeah. right? So um, so I've, I've selected only the tracks, not all tracks, but I've selected only the tracks that I want to contribute to the, the, the Q-Mix. Yeah, by the way, to, to select individual tracks without losing your selections, of course, is holding the command key on a Mac or the, uh, the, uh, the control key on a PC, which you That's can... Right deselect and select tracks right uh, okay. so what we want to do now is uh, is create a send on these 
uh, selected tracks only mm -hmm. on the selected tracks. So you'll go yep. on one of these and select one of the send segments and hold down the shift option or shift alt if you're on a windows machine which will do the same operation to all of your selected tracks That's and right. you would select an output send which you don't have andy so you'll have to go on a bus send i'll choose it? bus send but yeah. it would be you would select an output send and select your headphone outputs We'll, 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 we'll pretend that it works. And as you can see here, because Andy was holding shift command, he created uh, an output send on all of the tracks that were selected at the time. So great. And all of these faders will, of course, would be if you click on one of them, Andy, they will be set to minus infinity, which is the standard setting for, for, uh, for your sends. You can change that, by the way, but it's a good safety measure to have it's that to minus to. infinity. Yes. Yeah. Um, so there is a preference. Um, if you go up here into setup, into preferences. Is he going to go straight there? It? Are you going to go straight there? Uh, uh, mixing? Yeah. <laughs> um, send defaults to uh, <laughs> to negative infinity. Don't uncheck this. Don't. Just yeah. don't. I mean, it. You it, You might think that it. Um, it's a pain to have to drag up your faders. And you're right. But it's also it's more a of a pain, pain to have to, to take your, your speakers bone, to, yeah. to get reconed. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> or a pain in the ears if you're having yeah, people with headphones on. I could do with that to blow yeah, the so. wax out of my ears at the moment. Yeah. I'm struggling with so, that so, one. So, uh, so Andy, you've, you've got a, a kind of a, a mix going here and uh, maybe even some automation going in, in, in this uh, track. And it would be hard to replicate this mix entirely by like yeah. clicking and dragging all of the sends. So there's a great feature for just copying all of the fader uh, settings to your sense. Yeah. And this mm -hmm. feature is now in the new Pro Tools Studio version. I love Pro Tools Studio. Yeah. So Pro Tools Studio is just yeah. so much value. So basically, uh, a lot of the ultimate features uh, are, have now moved into the studio segment, mm -hmm. which this is one of those features that has. So you go. Uh, well, first, I'm gonna first yep. of all let me show something. I'm gonna hold down the command key on a Mac or the control key on a Windows machine. I'm just gonna click the little plus by uh, each one of these, which takes me into expanded sends mode. And you can see here that all of these faders are down at mi minus infinity. Why? Because of that preference. Very nice. Um, I'm only I'm only doing that so that you can see how cool what Anders is gonna show you is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By the by the way, Andy, it's not the plus. It's a little arrow because it's, it's a, a send. Arrow. Yeah. Uh, it's a little arrow. Yeah, I have no <laughs> eyes left. <laughs> uh, no yeah. Eyes okay. Left. So, uh, so next up, we'll go to edit automation, and then there is the uh, copy to send is at the top. copy to send uh, option, which yeah. is on top of the the window here, or option command H, as you can see. Great. And uh, so what we can do now is we can copy <coughs> all of the faders at their current values. And that is great if you have a static mix or if it's at a place in the mix where you think that it's a good value to set and have that static. But you can also copy the automation if you have a dynamic mix where actually people uh, tracks are, are, are being uh, like dynamically controlled. And um, you, you know, which one do, I'm going to ask you, mm -hmm. which one do you normally use? Anderson. I'll just use the current value. So do I. And I, I know why I do. Why do you? Uh, well, uh, people want to have a static value in headphones in my uh, in my uh, world, at least. Like they want to have their own volume on, on their own mm -hmm. guitar and stuff. They don't want the volumes to change over time as they are playing. So uh, that's why I do it. Why do you do it? So I, I normally do it because um, this this what you're going to see when we create this this thing that you're going to see is going to basically be a starting off point nobody wants to hear a headphone mix that sounds exactly what's in the yeah. control room yeah, um exactly. the bass player wants to hear starting mix yeah. yeah the bass player wants to hear more of them the guitar player mm -hmm. wants to hear more of them the singer wants to hear more of them right um and if you're follow if you if you copy automation then you have to go in and manually delete the automation on the, the tracks mm -hmm. that you want to boost or else they're going to follow automation. So I just find yeah. it usually easier to just go ahead with current value unless there's a specific reason to go with automation. Yeah. Yeah. So go current value here. And yeah. uh, and as it says here of all the selected tracks, so just hitting OK, we'll copy the the current volume of all the faders to yep. the sense. So I'm ready to click OK. 
Yep. Really? Have I missed something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to copy it to send, send F. Oh, That's right. sorry. I, I didn't see That's that you right. were on send F. Yeah, yeah, sure. You, you need to set up the, the proper send, of course. So send F. I did set up the proper send. You <laughs> didn't choose the proper send here. I'm, I'm really sorry, uh, Mr. Hageman. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hageman. <laughs> I didn't know there was a dash uh, in Hageman. <laughs> Hageman. Um, God, it's the Pro Tools jokes today. Um, you know, the other thing, too, before, I mean, you can also uh, copy up your volume, pans, mutes, LFEs. Um, and pans is not a bad idea, actually, to do, because uh, you will get uh, a, a pan value, for, especially for drums and stuff like that. It's it all, it, it depends, though. Yeah. I, th I find a lot of times that um, that people, especially singers, will take one can off their ears like I'm just doing right now, mm. and so if, if things are panned too extremely, it'll mm. it, it'll it's move things better. around. So, um, so, so again, it comes down Depending to on, you know yeah. what works what works for you. Now this this is the payoff. Watch this is amazing. Boink. Whoa. Boom. Just, there you go. Oh, That's so great, right? And notice by the way that uh, because what we had, it moved all the it copied all the fader values up. The pans did not. Mm -hmm. Right, because all mm -hmm. the panning down here, for example, on my trumpets did not go. So there are pan dead center, which again is going to think I you'd potentially be less distracting. It depends again on mm -hmm. the on the entire situation. But this Anders is not a sends episode. This is a master fader episode. Yeah. So what might happen is as you start adding tracks to your session, or maybe you're boosting signals everywhere, like the, 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 the bass player wants to hear him louder and the drummer wants to hear himself louder and stuff. And all of a sudden you're like exceeding or you're actually clipping the output. Your, your mm, mix is too loud. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and this is a great place to insert a master fader. So uh, so if you create a new master fader form, please, uh, in stereo, of course. Yeah. And let's call this the headphone master or headphone trim or whatever you want to call it. Let's call it head Q1 because yep. you can have mm -hmm. different major con ma uh, controls for, yep. I mean, we've done one Q-mix. You can have, you know, 10 Q-mixes mm -hmm. on this. Yep. Let's go head Q1 and that's a master fader. And yep. then this then is going to be assigned to what now? So in your case, you will see it, set it to this bus. Uh, you you would uh, typically set that to the output, of course, uh, uh, your Q1 output. So right. in your case, yeah. And so but, now this becomes, basically this becomes your, your individual thing. So if, if somebody says, uh, I want the piano to be tremendously quiet, so I go here, br mm -hmm. bring it down, or I could mute it, right? Um, then this becomes the master volume control for that person's headphone mix. Yeah, which is great. So as it's I said, uh, one one of the things that might happen after a while as you start add, adding tracks, because you might not be too loud in the beginning, but as you're going, you're sure. getting constantly louder and all of a sudden you're basically clipping your output. So then the, the uh, having the master on the send output is a perfect way to just bring down the signal slightly yeah and you and generally speaking in record situations you want to keep your headphone mix as quiet as you can get away with right um if you're if you're mm. getting to the point where you're even close to clipping your headphone mix you're probably way too loud and you're coming through the, the microphone that you're point. recording mm. yeah, yeah but so that, you want i mean that doesn't need to be the volume that they are actually listening to they might have sure. their own volume knob and it's not that loud in the headphones but it's actually we're talking about stuff inside of Pro Tools, right? If sure. you're too much signal going out of this output, how do you bring it down? Uh, yeah. We're using and, master. Yeah, but generally speaking, again, you know, mm. you want that yeah. to be as quiet as you possibly can. Whether or not this is your your final mm. control, and you're just going mm -hmm. to a dumb amplifier, going to headphones, which sometimes happens, or whether or not they've got some sort of a gain knob that they yeah. can control, you want them to go as low as you possibly can with. With their uh, headphone mix. Can I can yeah. I can I ask one question about your sends? Because there'll be some smart aleck out there that's probably going to point Shh. this out. If you're running yeah, headphone sends, uh, can we put those into uh, pre-fade mode? Do you run them in yeah, pre-fade sure. mode? That's in fact that's the one thing that we haven't done yet, right? Yeah. So 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 here's here's the thing is um, I've set up uh, these to be. I'll show my sends A through E. So 
sense A through E, I've got some some reverbs and some delays and stuff like that. Okay, um, could I create? Could I move these all up here to 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 have them be in the top? sense sure i could but one of the reasons why i like to have my cues all at the same position is so i can do something like this hold down option and then sorry what is it the you hold the the p button just, there we go or, yeah, yeah um uh, right click it uh click pre fader or click the pre yeah. button and then that does okay. the same thing to do but yes you definitely do mm -hmm. um dave you're 100 right zero percent wrong our job was not done yet um mm -hmm. that you want to make sure that your cue mixes are all pre fader send so that any changes we make down here do not yeah. affect what happens up here in the yep. yeah in, totally in thanks the for reminding me mm -hmm. yep. by the way i love the the blue light that they <coughs> added uh, it was mm -hmm. years ago but i really, really like that yeah is that yours <laughs> won't take direct responsibility for it but <laughs> on behalf of Evan. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so that's yeah. uh, that's my my use case for master faders. It's brilliant. Yeah, nicely mm -hmm. done. Um, absolutely a great use for it. We we could also use auxiliary tracks though, right? Could you potentially yeah, sure. use you use could. those? A any mm -hmm. reason for using a master fader over an aux? Uh, it's simpler to set up because the master fader only really requires you to click one button, select the output. Um, if you wanted to, for whatever reason, to put any processing on the headphone mix, which I wouldn't recommend because it's going to cause latency, mm -hmm. um, then you would want to use the, the aux track, but there's no reason why you couldn't. Um, but, but if you were, you know, clipping into the aux track, you know, as, as, as Andrew said, if there was a whole bunch of, if you were just driving and pushing up everything and you got yourself into a clipping situation, then you're right back to needing a master fader to, to trim that out. That's exactly, that's exactly the thing, isn't it? Because the master fader is controlling the level hitting its destination, whereas the, the right. aux track is uh, adjusting the volume going out. <clears throat> so that's right. Yeah. Controlling mm -hmm. the signal at two different points. Awesome stuff. Uh, thank you very much, Anders. The, the best Anders-centric episode we've ever it had. It was. It was really good. <laughs> Bravo. Should, he should, oh, he should do this. We should let him off his leash more often. <laughs> Great job. Thank you. So if you'd like what we've been doing in this episode, uh, please like our video. Please share them around as well, because that really helps us. Um, obviously, trying to get Pro Tools answers to as uh, many Pro Tools users as we can so that we can help them uh, understand the app. Uh, it's a complex one and that's why we have a fantastic training program organized by Andy and taught by master instructor Anders right there. And Dave. Oh, and, Andy. and I wasn't going to say. But. Modesty prevents you. Among other things. Um, <laughs> <coughs> So yes, hit like on the video, uh, subscribe to our channel as well, and hit the bell icon so you get notified of the videos as we release them uh, every week. You can head over to ProToolsAnswers.com where you can subscribe over there, and Andy will send you a, a weekly digest email to let you know what we've been up to, and some of his most inner thoughts as well, and they're usually very, very interesting. And if you fancy taking that next step, uh, you can support Pro Tools Answers uh, by joining our inner circle, and you can learn more about that over at ProToolsAnswers.com as well. So all leads me to say is thank you very much to Andy you betcha thank you very much to Anders for driving thank you you little legend you <laughs> my name's Dave this is Pro Tools Answers and we're out <laughs>